Hello, my name is Neil Kinsey. I have a business, Kinsey Agricultural Services in uh, Charleston, Missouri. We specialize in working with problem soils, but in the process of working with problem soil, we generally get a chance to work with the rest of the soils as well. So our business is analyzing soils and making recommendations as to what to do to grow the best crops on those soils. I'm here to speak a little bit about uh, limestone and the value of calcium in agriculture. I would say that when you look at farming in general in terms of soils around the world, we do soils from 75 different countries uh, all around the world. And one of the major limiting factors is that of understanding calcium when it's necessary, how much to use, and what that will do for the crop. Not just in terms of yield, although it can make a big difference in yield, but also in terms of nutrient values as well. When we think about limestone, there are certain benefits that we should consider, and not to take away from other things, but just standing here thinking about what is the thing that would be of most value or most interest to the farming community. Limestone will affect the pH of a soil, but the, really, the thing that really calcium does when we have enough calcium in that soil, as uh, Dr. William Albrecht uh, would say, who uh, that was the man that I studied under, and he said calcium is necessary to get every other nutrient into the plant. If we don't have enough calcium, it takes more nitrogen to do the same job. It takes more phosphorus to do the same job. It takes more potassium to do the same job. It takes more of all the trace elements to do the same job. So calcium is what he always would call the doorman. It's the it's the element that needs to be in the soil to open the door to get all the other elements into the plant. If we don't have enough calcium, it takes more fertilizer to grow the same crop. In addition, as far as legumes, when you're growing beans or soybeans or any type of a legume, we need adequate calcium there to promote nodulation on, those, on the roots of the legumes. If you don't have good nodulation, the very first thing to look at is do you have adequate calcium in those soils. If the calcium is short, nodulation is not going to be as efficient. So that's two benefits that we can look at very quickly in terms of calcium. But in, if we look at one other, it has to do with the nutritive values because many things that we look at today, many crops or foods that we look at are deficient in calcium. If the soil doesn't have enough calcium, what we grow there is not going to have enough calcium. Calcium is necessary in the soil so that we can grow roots because calcium grows, sorry, roots grow through calcium, not to calcium. They have to have calcium there to grow. So if you want a good root system, calcium really is necessary. We'll hear about other things, but calcium has to be there. The uh, next portion is once we get that calcium to be in the soil, some people say, well, you know, if we put calcium on, how much do we need? The only way to really tell what you need in terms of, a, of the amount of calcium in the soil is to do a soil test that measures not just pH, but pH and then how much of that pH is made up from calcium, how much from magnesium, how much from potassium, and how much from sodium. Many of the soils we see in Belize need calcium even though they have a good pH because pH doesn't tell you what you have in a soil. It only says if you have a high pH, it says you have too much of something. If you have too much of one thing, you're going to have too little of something else. And in, high, in some of the soils then believe that we see, the high pH doesn't mean you have enough calcium. Still measuring the calcium in that soil and applying what's required will make that soil perform even better. We've done a number of soil tests here in Belize, and we find that the soils vary from one area to another. We'll see some places that have high calcium more than it needs and low magnesium and in those cases limestone doesn't work but those are the exception to the rule as far as the samples that we've seen most of the samples that we see are deficient in calcium and if it's only calcium that's short then a good high calcium limestone would work well but then we see other samples that are short in both calcium and magnesium and in those cases we have to use at least a portion of the lime as dolomite in order to supply the magnesium 
some of those soils the dolomite will work to take care of all the calcium needs in other areas we'll supply enough dolomite to take care of the magnesium and what calcium we can but still may have to put on extra calcium lime in order to get those relationships right because it's a matter of having the proper amount of calcium and magnesium in those soils if you put on calcium and don't put on magnesium because of magnesium deficiency then that sets up a whole, nother, a whole new set of problems. We do limestone analysis as well as soil analysis because until you know what's in the limestone itself, you don't really know which one is most appropriate for the soil needs. And here in Belize, we've done soil, uh, soil samples, but also in order to take care of the lime on those soil samples, we know, need to know what's in the limestone deposits. And in one particular case, in terms of Limby lime, we've tested limestone deposits that they have. They have a, a lime if you need a pure calcium carbonate de, uh, limestone. They have lime de, deposits that supply that. They also have a dolomitic limestone that when you need uh, calcium and magnesium it can supply both. There is what we would in the U.S. call a CalMag lime or uh, it doesn't exactly match out. It could be dolomitic but not dolomite where the calcium magnesium relationships are not quite the same, but in those particular instances we'll actually sit down and figure out what the soil needs and then between those three limestones see which one is best or which combination of two is best because you need an analysis of each one in order to know what works best in terms of what's going to supply the nutrients to grow your crop. If you're a farmer and limestone is something to consider, I think it's the most undervalued material that makes a difference in terms of production for agriculture in the world, not just undervalued in terms of price, but also undervalued in terms of what it will do for you because in terms of uh, soils, until you get the calcium right, we don't have the potential there to get the right yield. And until we get the magnesium right, we don't have the potential there to make the most yield. And so what my advice would be, don't just look at pH. Look at the nutrients that pH affect. Find out what a soil test says you need and apply that and it will always make a difference that more than pays for itself.